The other day, I spied with my little eye this big hubbub on Twitter. There was a dungeon master saying, one of my players has written a character backstory that is way too long. So long, in fact, that I am going to kill that player character. Ha 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 ha. Now, that would be a bit facetious, a bit tongue-in-cheek, a bit silly. But that did tell me, wow, maybe some dungeon masters don't enjoy using character backstories. Maybe some character backstories are a bit unwieldy for some dungeon masters to use properly, which is a shame, which is a shame, because you can mine those good character backstories for all kinds of special player moments. I've got a creative writing degree, and I know that some people have some anxiety, some stresses about their creative writing ability. Maybe they're a bit self-conscious, but don't worry, because this is gonna be like a five-step little process that you can follow and very little of it is actually creative writing. To be on the right path, your character backstory needs to fulfill these four functions. Firstly, it needs to be relevant to the campaign. It needs to answer the question, hey, why is my character interested in pursuing this particular quest with this particular party? And you need a solid answer to that question. Your backstory needs to be partially incomplete so your dungeon master can insert their own elements of the campaign into your backstory to make it even further relevant and so they can call back to your backstory later. Your backstory needs to provide a narrative justification for the mechanical choices that you've made in your character sheet. And this last function is more useful for you than it is for the dungeon master. You get to play with your character before even bringing it to the table. This is a free space, a playground for you to work out what your character feels and looks like and sounds like and thinks and, and wants, etc. By the way, I do have to acknowledge that this advice is a little bit abstract. And for some people, you might, you might be a little bit lost. I'm sorry about that. I have done a more in-depth write-up on my Patreon, and it also has a template that you can give to your players explaining exactly what the function of each part of the character backstory is and really set your expectations for what you, the dungeon master, want to get back from them. You can get that and every single thing on my Patreon for $5 e-dues. Please check it out. I really appreciate the support. Step one. Come up with a few character ideas. And this is just the loosest shape of a character, right? It is vague and you're gonna come up with a few options. Because maybe you just have something like, ooh, I want to play a fighter who uses a bow. That's fine. You've come at it from a mechanical standpoint. That's a good starting point. Or you might say, hmm, I wanna play a character that's a little bit like the Flash. And that's a character standpoint. That's where you started. That's fine as well. Because we're gonna take those narrative elements and we're gonna take those mechanical elements and we're going to kind of give and take and find some shape of a character in there somewhere but you need to come up with a few character ideas because the very first step is to take those character ideas and pitch them to your dungeon master and party see how everybody else is feeling see what's going to work in this group and those are two important things keeping your ideas loose and looking for feedback that's going to become a theme throughout this whole process. You want to keep your ideas loose like when you're assembling a piece of Ikea furniture because you get that flat pack and you start putting it all together. What you do is you put the screws in lightly and then you tighten them up a little bit at a time. You don't grab one screw and go all the way in and then go find another one and go and set that in place all the way in because you're going to end up making a mistake that's hard to undo. You keep it loose and you can correct as you go along and getting feedback from your players and your dungeon master that's how you know which corrections to make. As an example, for my latest character backstory, I went in with two options, two loose ideas. One was just, I want to play a teenage ice witch. And the other one was, I want to play a very effeminate celestial warlock named Furio. And we landed on Furio. So that's the character that I'm playing. Step two, super simple. Just fill out a character sheet. Now you can do this however you like. Pen and paper, that's fine. I use D&D Beyond. This, this video is not sponsored. Um, I would like to be, hey, D&D Beyond, do you want to do a do an old sponsorino? How do I make them sponsor me? D&D Beyond doesn't have the guts to sponsor this YouTube channel. <laughs> Can I bully them into sponsoring me? I don't know how this works. Okay, so you're going to fill out a character sheet. You're going to fill out a character sheet. And you can keep your ideas loose here. Just make some decisions, even if your race changes, even if your abilities changes, even if your spells change, that's fine. You can come back later and change all that stuff. The point is just to put something on the page. For me, for Furio, I ended up being a celestial warlock. I was a variant human. And as my extra feat, I chose the moderately armored so I could 
wear like a chain shirt and have, have a shield. Step three, look for interesting parts on your character sheet. Now this is the note taking stage. Lucky Duck, you have a bunch of information on your character sheet now. You've got a class, a race and abilities and spells and items, all kinds of different things. Now I literally want you to photocopy it or print it out, grab a red pen and just circle things that stand out to you on this character sheet. Things that you have a few questions about. Maybe there's a skill choice that's interesting. You go, ooh, hang on, my fighter is proficient in medicine. What's all that about? Or, oh, my fighter is really good with a bow. That's the fighting style. I wanna know more about that. Maybe you have an interesting um, race class combination. Maybe you have interesting spells. Now for me, with Furio, here's what I noticed. I noticed when I was choosing all of my equipment, I didn't have enough gold for any weapons, but I do have a wand. So I went, oh, I wonder if that wand is special. And I went, well, that feat with moderately armored, that kind of makes me stand out. Maybe I'm not like a classic warlock, Maybe I'm a knight, so I picked the knight background and now my character has three retainers. Isn't that fun? Step four is filling in the blanks and this is where we do our writing scaffolding. At this point, you should have a character sheet that has highlighted the things that you find interesting about your character, the questions that you want answered. And we're gonna use these questions to build the skeleton of our character backstory. Now at the end of this, at the end of this scaffolding stage, you're, you could stop, you know, you will have a functional character backstory at the end of this step. The shape of this scaffolding is gonna look like this. It will be a list of exploding dot points. The top header for each little bit of this list is gonna be a header. It's gonna have the main fact of the matter. Furio hates his father, right? That's the fact of the matter. And then below that, we're just gonna have a bunch of dot points that kind of back that up in any order. Like Furio's father is a great war hero. Furio's father is very strict. Furio is very weak. Furio is a disappointment. I'm getting sad for Furio, right? But you just have the fact up here and then you have the evidence down here. It doesn't have to be chronological. It doesn't have to make sense. And it doesn't even have to all make it into your final backstory. We're just throwing stuff out there. And you're gonna make one of these little exploding dot point lists for as many things as you highlighted on your character sheet that you're still interested in. And the goal with this is to fulfill a few functions. This is the point where you're looking for at least one moment, one thing about your character that ties you into the campaign. So for example, for Furio, the thing that ties him into the Tyranny of Dragons campaign is his warlock patron. I highlighted, oh, I'm very interested in this celestial uh, patron. Maybe it's a, it's a unicorn. That's exciting. And this unicorn is giving Furio prophetic dreams about dragons and colors and painting and all kinds of things. Your scaffolding also needs to provide three NPCs that your dungeon master can use to tie your character into the story. One NPC needs to be a friend, one NPC needs to be an enemy, and one NPC needs to be a rival, which is, you know, somewhere in between. So for Furio, that was his father being the enemy, and two of his retainers were his friends, and the other one of his retainers, his squire, was actually his rival. And the last thing you're looking for in this scaffolding is you don't want to have all the answers. If you get overwhelmed thinking, oh my goodness, how am I gonna work all this out about this character's history? Mate, you don't have to answer all these questions. You want to deliberately leave gaps for your dungeon master to fill in because you're gonna send this draft of scaffolding to your dungeon master with specific questions. For example, I don't know much about Furio's father. Right? I don't know much about the campaign or the characters that exist out there in the world or the organization. So I send my dungeon master this scaffolding with the question, hey, who was Furio's father and what war did he fight in? And like, what, how is he a hero? What did he do? And I'm ha my character's having like prophecies and nightmares and dreams. What are the actual dreams that my character is having? And my dungeon master gets back with me with all this relevant stuff that I'm sure is gonna enrich my experience in the tyranny of dragons. Why did I say it like that? Step five, this part is completely optional. It's fleshing it out. This is where you do the actual prose writing and rewriting. The goal of fleshing out your backstory here is for you, the player, to work out your character's voice. What do they sound like? What do they feel? What do they want? And it's just a safe space to have a play around. You know, it's your page, you can do what you want. You know, it's all correct. You've already gotten it approved by the dungeon master. 
you can just, you know, mess about. Each of those headers that you made on your exploding dot point list, leave them as they are, but all the points below them, I want you to turn each of those into a sentence. So instead of saying, Furio's father is very strict, turn that into a description of something that he has done that was very strict, like beating Furio with a wooden sword or so something like that. For the formatting and style of your character backstory, just keep in mind that you are not writing prose. You're not writing an actual short story. You're writing a functional document. It doesn't need to detail your character from being a baby to, to now. It's not a chronological report of events. It is a character backstory. You're looking for key moments about your character that you're comfortable being imported into the game and meeting at an eye level in a role-playing encounter. Hey, let's turn this comment section into a really good repository for character backstory advice. If you have a number one tip for a character backstory, leave it downstairs. I want to read about it. All these people are my patrons. They are really cool. Everybody, everybody that's on this list is super, super rad. Um, I just use the end of these videos to give compliments to patrons. I, I think you're all very funny and nice. Hey, uh, check out one of these videos. These might be good. These could, what, have you seen these videos? Whoa. I'm really bad at the end of videos.